Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how to choose a mouse for yourself to maximize your aiming potential and comfort while gaming, and cover all the grips for different mice and the benefits and downsides of them all. Let's go. Here are the timestamps for each section, which are also in the description if you want to click them. Starting off, I need to say that each person's hand and fingers are different, so there isn't always a best mouse or grip that may suit every person. Mouse grip and mouse shape and size go hand in hand, as different hand sizes may be more comfortable with different grips on the same sized mouse or different mice that have different grip shapes and also have different grips that are comfortable. So let's start with grips. There are three major grip styles and them being fingertip where the ends of your finger are the major parts touching the mouse this major grip type has the largest range of motion of the fingers, but also has the downsides of being the least stable. Then there is claw grip. It also has the ends of the fingers touching the mouse, but also has one other part of the hand stabilizing this. This can provide a middle ground between stability and freedom of range of motion with your fingers and wrist. The last one is palm grip where the back palm of your hand is in full contact with the back of the mouse, like the opposite to finger grip, it provides the most stability of movement and the least range of motion of the fingers to almost none. And range of motion here is really important because it can allow more movements with more parts of your hand, which is important and can help with increasing your aiming potential. So that's why I'll never really recommend a palm grip, as it has no option for that extra precision. Those are the major grips, and there are very many variations of those, with some variations in the hybrids that I may not cover through this. But let's go through each minor one for what they look like, and with the help of an amazing graphic made by Fully Hectic on Twitter. Starting again with major fingertip grip, where the only parts in contact with the mouse are the ends of the fingertips. Next is extended fingertip grip, where more of the fingers are in contact, but they are normally straight and potentially the underside of the knuckles are also in contact. Now onto claw grip with pincer claw grip which has fingertips and the two sides of the palm supporting the back. Knuckle claw is next where it's like extended fingertip but only the fingertips and the underside of the knuckles are in contact. Carpal stabilized claw is the major hybrid of claw with fingertips and the base of the palm contacting. Finally is palm, with forward palm is when the back of your hand is cupping the back of the mouse without the base of the palm touching. And the last is full palm, with the majority of the palm of your hand is touching the mouse. Last thing is that grips change and it's good to not lock your hand into that one position, so move it around and be comfortable. You'll perform the best if you're not uncomfortably gripping your mouse. Now we have this, we can move on to how to decide on what mouse you should use. But I won't really talk about specific recommendations as new mice come out every month. So I'm going to talk about the different ways that you can choose a mouse on your own. If you want to have an easy convenient way to find a mouse that suits you and your hand size and grip, you can use Rocket Jump Ninja's mouse search in the description. But it won't really cover all the grip types and won't tell you why each mouse works for those parameters. Now, let's find a mouse first. You need to measure your hand size, which you can do by measuring from the base of your palm to the end of your middle finger, and then measure the width from the widest part of your hand to the outer edge of your thumb. Then we can find 60% of these measurements for the grip width and the length of the mouse respectively. Now, you have to find mice that are inside that range of the grip width and the length of mouse that you just calculated. You can do this by looking up the manufacturer's specifications of mice that you think are around your hand size, or use a aggregate specification sheet like the one that's on gearsearch.gg. You can never get directly on this number, so you can be a bit lenient. With fingertip and claw, it's better to go below or close to that number as possible. And for palm, you can be more comfortable with a number larger than that. Before we go on, let's talk about mouse shapes and the different types. There are two major mouse shapes, ergonomic and ampidextrous. 
ergonomic types are mice that are normally designed for either left or right handed people, not both, and is much more comfortable for more grip types and works the best for claw and palm grips. Then there are ambidextrous types, which are mice that are normally symmetrical and can be used for both and left and right hands, but buttons are not normally set up for this, and it works best for fingertip and sometimes claw grips. When looking at a mouse, there is one major thing apart from the shape type that can influence a grip, and that's the height and the position of the hump. The more forward the hump is, the more palm is comfortable and works best on that. And the more the hump is towards the back of the mouse, the more claw is comfortable and works best. For hump height, the lower the hump is, the more fingertip is comfortable. And going back to gearsearch.gg, they have an amazing feature to compare shapes of mice, so find the mice that are close to that calculated number and the shape type that you want. Then use the shape comparisons tool and to see which shape will fit the one that you want. Now if you have two mice that are close, you can compare features like weight, if it's wireless or not, lighting or anything else. But that should come behind shape and size first if you want maximum aiming potential. To talk more specific on these things, is that weight can help you with acceleration of fatigue where a lighter mouse may be able to accelerate faster with the same amount of force which can reduce strain on the arms for long periods of time. But some people claim that there are downsides to being too light around where it might be harder to do smoother motions as it accelerates and decelerates faster. But I don't think too many mice are at that stage at the moment of making this video. Now to recap this video, there are many grips and their own benefits and downsides around range of motion and stability with fingertip being the least stable and the most range of motion and palm being the opposite as well as what are the different major and minor variations of these major grips and what they look like. Also the basics of mouse shape type and hump position. Then lastly, we covered the basic method to find a mouse that maximizes your aiming potential specifically for your grip and hand size parameters. While this method is simple, it is only the basics around gripping and mouse shape theory. It's a good starting point for many and there is much to improve with it, so any feedback is always welcome with my content. So send me any feedback you have to improve my videos and content if you have any. And that's it. Thank you all for watching, make sure to subscribe and like if you did. And go follow my social medias in the description down below as well as join my discord to stay up to date with everything I do and chat with me and some other amazing people in the community. See ya.